Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back to this video series on cryptocurrency. Constructing the block header. To construct the block header, the mining node needs to fill in six fields as listed in table 10 tree, four bytes version, a version of, sorry, a version number to track software protocol upgrades, 32 bytes, previous block hash, a reference to a hash of the previous parent block in the chain, 32 bytes, Merkle root, a hash of the root of the Merkle tree of this block's transactions, four bytes timestamp, the, appro the approximate creation time of this block, seconds from Unix epoch, four bytes target, the proof of work algorithm target, uh, for this block, four bytes, a counter used for the proof of work algorithm. At the time uh, that block 277316 was mined, uh, the version number describing the block structure is version 2, which is encoded in little endian format in four bytes as. 0x02000 zero 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 zero. Next, the mining node needed to add the previous block hash, as also known as prev hash. That is the hash of the block header of the block 277315, the previous block received from the network which Jing's node has accepted and selected as the parent of the candidate block 277316 and the block header hash for the block 277315 is I'm not going to read all that that's typically long but you can see it there yourselves um, the next step is to summarize all the transactions with a Merkle tree in order to add the Merkle root to the block header. The Coinbase transaction is listed as the first transaction in the block. Then 418 more transactions are added after it for a total of 419 transactions in the block. <clears throat> as we saw in the Merkle trees in page 201, there must be an even number of leaf nodes in the tree. So the last transaction is duplicated, creating 420 nodes, each containing the hash of one transaction. The transaction hashes are then combined in pairs, creating each level of the tree until all the transactions are summarized into one node at the root of the tree. The root of the Merkle tree summarized all the transactions into a single 30 byte, 32 bit byte value, which you can see listed as Merkle root in example. 10 13 and here so again i'm not going to read all this out i don't have time but you can see it there anywhere jing's mining node will then add a four bit sorry a four byte timestamp encoded as a unix epoch timestamp which is based on the number of seconds elapsed from january 1st 1970 on a midnight utc gmt um, the time 13881859144 is equal to Friday, 27th of December 2013, 231154 UTC GMT. Jing's node then fills in the target which defines the required proof of work to make this a valid block. The target is stored in the block as a, as a target bits metric which is a mantissa exponent encoding the target the encoding has 11 byte exponent followed by a 3 byte mantissa coefficient in block 277316 for example the target bit value is 0x1903a30c the first part 0 x19 is a hexadecimal component while the next part 0x03 
A330C is the coefficient, the final feed, the final field is the nonce, <coughs> which is initialized to zero. With all that other fields filled, the block header is now complete and the process of mining can begin. The goal is now to find a value for the nonce that results in a block header hash that is less than the target. The mining node will need to test millions or trillions of nonce values before a nonce is found that satisfies the requirement. Mining the block. Now that a candidate block has been constructed by Jing's node, it's time for Jing's hardware mining rig to mine the block to find a solution to the proof of work algorithm that makes the block valid. Throughout this, throughout this book, we have studied cryptographic hash functions as used in various aspects of the Bitcoin system. The hash function SHA256 is the function used in Bitcoin's mining process. In the simplest terms, mining is the process of hashing the block header uh, repeatedly, changing one parameter until the resulting hash matches a, tar a specific target. The hash function's result cannot be determined in advance, nor can a pattern be created that will produce a specific hash value. This feature of hash function means that the only way to produce a hash result matching a specific target is to try again, again and again, randomly modifying the input until the desired hash result appears by chance proof of work algorithm. A hash algorithm takes the arbitrary length data input and produces a fixed length deterministic result, a digital fingerprint of the input for any specific input. The resulting hash will always be the same <clears throat> and can be easily calculated and verified by anyone implementing the same hash algorithm. The key characteristics of a cryptographic hash algorithm is that it is computationally infeasible to find two different inputs that produce the same fingerprint known as a collision. As a corollary, um, it is also virtually impossible to select an input in such a way as to produce a desired fingerprint other than trying random inputs with SHA256 the output is always 256 bits long regardless of the size of the input in example 1018 we will use the python interpreter to calculate the SHA256 hash of the phrase I am Satoshi Nakamoto <coughs> So example 256SHA256 example Python import hash lib print hash lib SHA I am Satoshi Nakamoto hexa digest I'm not reading all this it's too long example 1018 shows the result of calculating the hash of I am Satoshi Nakamoto the 256 bit number is the hash or digest or the phrase and depends er and every part of the phrase adding a single letter punctuation mark and any other character will produce a different hash now if we change the phrase we should expect to see completely different hashes let's try that by adding a number to the end of our phrase using a simple python script example 1019 um, example irritating announce in a hashing algorithms input import hash lib text I am Satoshi Nakamoto literate non ins form 0 to 19 from nonce in x range 20 add to the nonce to the end of the text input equals text plus str nonce calculate the SHA256 hash of the input text nonce hash lib SHA256 input um, hex I just show the input and the hash result 
print input hash and so I'm not going to read all this but here you can see in the example 1010 SHA 256 output of the script generating many hashes by iterating one nonce s a hash sign python hash example py um, each phrase produces a completely different hash result they seem completely random but you can reproduce the exact results in the example on any computer with python to see the exact um, hashes the number used as a variable in such a scenario is called a nonce the nonce is used to vary the output of a cryptographic function in this case to vary the sha256 fingerprint of the phrase to make a challenge out of this algorithm let's set the target find a phrase that produces a hexadecimal hash that starts with zero fortunately this isn't difficult example 1010 shows the phrase i am satoshi nakamoto produces a hash again this is all too long which fits our criteria it took 13 attempts to find it in terms of probabilities if the output of the has function is evenly distributed we would expect to find a result with a zero as a hexadecimal prefix once every 16 hashes one out of 16 hexadecimal digits zero through f in numerical terms the <coughs> that means finding a hash value that is less than 0x1 and all those zeros we call this threshold uh, the target and the goal is to find a hash that is numerically less than the target if we decrease the target the task of finding the hash that is less than the target becomes more and more difficult to give a simple an analogy imagine a game where players throw a pair of dice repeatedly trying to throw less than a specific target in the first round the target is 12 um, unless you throw double six you win in the next around the target is 11 <coughs> players must throw 10 or less to win again an easy task let's say a few rounds later the target is down to five now more than half the dice throws will exceed the target and therefore be invalid it takes a exponentially more dice throws to win the lower the target gets eventually when the target is to the minimum possible only one throws out every 36 or two percent of them will produce a winning result from the perspective of an observer who knows that the target of the dice game is to if someone has succeeded in casting a winning throw it can be sure a kick be assumed that they attempted on average 36 throws in other words one can estimate the amount of work it takes to succeed from the difficulty imposed by the target when the algorithm is based on a deterministic function such as SHA256 the input itself constitutes proof that a certain amount of work was done to produce the result below the target hence proof of work in example 1010 the winning nonce is 13 and this result can be confirmed by anyone independently anyone can add the number 13 as a suffix to the phrase i am satoshi nakamoto and compute this hash verifying that this is less than the target the successful result is also proof of work because it proves we did the work to find the nods while it only takes one hash computation to verify um, it took us 13 hash computations to find the nods that worked if we had a lower target higher difficulty it would take many more hash computations to find a suitable nonce but only one hash computation for anyone to verify furthermore knowing the target anyone can estimate um, 
the difficulty using statistics and therefore know how much work was needed to find such a nonce. Bitcoin's proof of work is very similar to the challenge shown in figure 1010. The miner constructs a candidate block filled with transactions. Next, the miner calculates the hash of this block's header and sees it if it's smaller than the current target. If that hash is not less than the target, the miner will modify the nonce, usually just incrementing it by one and and try again. And at the current difficulty in the Bitcoin network, miners have to try quadrillions of times before finding a nonce that results in a low enough block header hash. A very simplified proof of work algorithm is implemented in Python example 1011. Um, running this code, you can set the desired difficulty in bits, how many of the leading bits must be zero, how, and see how long it takes for your computer to find a solution. In example 10.2, you can see how it works on, the, on an average laptop. So here's just um, the example 10.11, simplified proof of work implementation. <clears throat> and example 10 to running proof of work for various difficulties as you can see increasing um, the difficulty by one bit causes the doubling in the time it takes to find a solution if you think of the entire 256 bit number space each time you constrain one more bit to zero you decrease the search space by half in example 10 12 it takes 84 million hash attempts to find a nonce that produces a hash with 26 leading bits as zero even at a speed of more than 120,000 hashes per second it still requires 10 minutes on a laptop to find the solution at this time of writing the network is attempting to find a block whose header hash is less than so I'm not going to read all this would take too long as you can see there are a lot of zeros at the beginning of the target meaning that the acceptable range of hashes is much smaller hence it's more difficult to find a valid hash it will take on average more than 1.8 SEPA hashes, 1000 billion billion hashes per second for the network to discover the next block. That seems like an impossible task, but fortunately, the network is bringing three extra hashes per second EHSEC of processing power to bear, which will be able to find a block in about 10 minutes on average. So I'm going to leave it here today for this video. If you like listening, please consider like, sharing and subscribing. Thank you.